this uh, technology I described before, which is to have a liquid crystal display and on the back of the display an LED backlight, as another advantage is that you can control luminance over a very wide range. So you can operate your display under photopic conditions, the same way you operate a computer monitor, but also you can reduce the luminance significantly down to the mesopic or even scotopic level. So this allows you to do, for example, dark adaptation tests or to do mesopic contrast sensitivity tests, just to give a few examples. As you can see here, the monitor can be used to generate a grating of contrast. You can do it with different spatial frequency. Typically, we use six different, what we call spatial frequency. That's a number of bars you can see over a visual angle of uh, one degree. So if you can see, for example, three bars over an angle of uh, one degree, that's three cycles per degree. So typically, this is a range of special frequency that we study. We test six different special frequency and we increase the contrast from very low contrast like this and we increase it until the patient can see it. Again here, again here, etc. And we get several measurements, up to five measurements for each special frequency and then we can plot the average curve and we can compare it to the normal values. Those two black lines are the normal values for a population between the age of 15 and the age of 50, typically. This is quite a simple exam. It can be also done, this is more for research, under mesopic conditions, in which case we reduce the luminance of the backlight and we are able to achieve very low luminance. And of course, then we have to modify the test because at low luminance, the patient will not be able to see the high spatial frequency. Another test which is quite useful is the glare test. You will notice that on the front of the MONPAC-1 or the MONCV3, which is similar to MONPAC-1 but can only do psychophysics, cannot do electrophysiology. So we have light sources which are very bright, it can be on the left or on the right side, typically for people who drive on the right side, we use the light on the left to simulate what happens when you drive at night and you cross another car with the headlights on. This technique works like this. We present a set of optotypes arranged on a circular manner around the light source and we ask the patient to read from the outer part to the inner part. So for example, N, R, N, etc. And you will notice that the light source, which is very bright, will create some kind of halo that will mask the letters nearby. This way we can get an index. How many letters have been correctly identified? And uh, this gives us an evaluation of the size of the halo. This is a very interesting test to document uh, patients who report a disability driving at night. It could be a early cataract, could be a problem with um, corneal edema. Dry eye is also very frequently generating glare abnormalities. The letters can be presented at three different levels of luminance. At the normal, well, what we call the normal level, may be difficult for people uh, at the uh, age of 60, for example, because of the early stage of cataract. In order to allow you to follow patients, with cataract, for example, we are providing three different levels of luminance for the letters. If the patient is not able to see anything at the lowest level of luminance, then you can go to the next level and then to the brightest level for the most difficult cases. Typically, this test must be done under mesopic conditions within a dark room to simulate the dark conditions of driving at night. Those glare sources can also be used for low vision people. People with low vision with a visual acuity less than 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is uh, 20 over 60. We cannot use these optotypes because the size of the letter is too small. So in that case, we can present larger optotypes and use the two light sources on both sides.